Hey guys, welcome back to the Cinema 4D tutorial series on constraints. In the second part, we're going to continue talking about the aim constraint, which is what we were talking about in the first part. But more specifically, we're going to be talking about double targeting. So as you can see, I've got two axis objects here in the viewport, and we're going to set these up for double targeting. So what exactly is double targeting? Well, to put it simply, you've got two objects that are always targeting each other. So this is very easy to set up. All we have to do is select the first one, shift select the second one, and I need to switch over to my constraints palette, and then we will call up the command for the aim constraint, click OK. Now we can select this one, shift select the second one, and add an aim constraint to that one. Now if I were to select this object and move it around, no matter where its position is at, you can see that these two objects are always targeting each other. This is what's called double targeting. Now there's something that I want to point out. Over here on the left hand side, this object here, I want you to pay attention to the Y axis that's pointing up. So I'm going to move this one over here on the right around, and I want you to pay attention to that Y axis. Notice that no matter where I move it, it's always trying to stay oriented in an upward direction. You can see it's swiveling or rotating around the X axis in order to keep itself in an upward direction. Now we didn't even apply an up vector to this, yet for some reason that Y axis always wants to maintain a general upward direction. The reason for this is that the CD aim constraint by default has the up vector set to plus Y axis. Now if we were to select both of those tags and turn this option off, now if I were to move this object, I want you to pay attention to the Y axis over here on the left. Notice that now it has become unstable. You can see that the targeting is working correctly but that y-axis is no longer wanting to maintain an upward direction. So I'm going to delete these two CD aim constraint tags. And what I'm going to do now is apply the native Cinema 4D aim constraint. So with this one selected, we will shift select the second one, go up to character constraints, add aim constraint. Then with this one selected, we will shift select this second one and do the same for that. We'll add a name constraint to it. So I'm going to select this one over here on the right hand side. Now I want you to watch the Y axis again over here on the left. Notice that we once again have an unstable rotation. That Y axis is no longer wanting to maintain a general upward direction. So this would be showing one of the differences between the CD aim constraint and the native Cinema 4D aim constraint. By default, the CD aim constraint already has the option for the up vector set to plus Y. So if you're not going to use the CD aim constraint, then what you're going to have to do is select these tags over here for the C4D aim constraint, and you're going to have to enable up. Now we have the up vector option and it is set to plus Y. So now if we select this one, you can see that now it's doing the same thing that the CD aim constraint was doing, which was maintaining a general upward direction. So when it comes to mechanical rigging, what exactly would you use double targeting for? What type of object would benefit from double targeting? So whenever I think of double targeting, I think of something like some type of piston, maybe something along the lines of a hydraulic piston actuator or something like that. So let's quickly put together something that would use double targeting. So I'm just going to create a new scene file and we're going to keep this very simple. There's no need to take a lot of time with the modeling. So we'll use the cylinder. That'll be the base of it. And I'm just going to duplicate that cylinder move that up this will be the bottom portion of it then we want to take that bottom one and we will duplicate that and push it up this will be the top portion 
We'll duplicate that one again. Shrink that down just a little bit. All right, so there is our little hydraulic piston. So the first thing we wanna do is make all of these editable. And then we wanna make this cylinder here a child of the base. And we wanna make this cylinder a child of the top one. And the reason for that is because whenever this top one moves or rotates, we want that other one to move with it. And the same for the bottom. Whenever the bottom one rotates, we want that other cylinder to move with it. All right, so the next thing we need to do is make sure that the axis are set up correctly for this. So we'll start with the top one, and you can see that the axis is not set up correctly because the targeting axis, which is the Z axis, is pointed at the back and we want that to be pointed down so we'll enable the axis mode grab the rotate tool and we will rotate that over 90 degrees just like that and we need to do the same for the bottom one because you can see the z-axis is also pointed at the rear so we just want to rotate that up so we'll turn on the axis mode grab the rotate tool and we will rotate that 90 degrees all right, so with the bottom one selected, we will shift select the top one, add the aim constraint to it. Now you can see that it flipped backwards on us, but don't worry, we'll talk about that in just a moment. With the top one selected, we will shift select the bottom one and add the aim constraint to that one as well. And that one also flipped on us. Now the reason why it flipped is because the up vector is automatically set to plus Y. So we can just turn that off on both of these tags and now it's working correctly. So all we have to do now is just take the bottom cylinder and move it. And there is our little hydraulic piston. Now you need to be careful when you're animating this because if you go too far, obviously you're gonna get a little bit of a gap in there. And if you go too far in the other direction, if that cylinder was long enough, it's going to intersect and protrude up from the top. So we'll talk about how to deal with that a little later in another tutorial, uh, but as you can see, this is working properly now. So now that we have a better understanding of what double targeting can be used for, let's apply it to something else. Perhaps maybe the turret that we built in the last part. So once again, we're going to keep this very simple. There's no reason to get overly complicated with the modeling. So we're going to start with a cylinder. And I'm going to position this up here at the front of the housing where that little extrusion is. And we will place that right about there. All right, so we want to duplicate that and we will change the orientation. We'll shrink that down a little bit and pull it up. And then we want to do the same for the top. So we'll take that one and duplicate it and this cylinder I think maybe what I'll do is just position it somewhere about there I think that'll be okay and we will just shrink this down so it's flush with the barrel and we will duplicate that one change its orientation shrink it down just a little bit and then pull it down all right, so we want to make those four editable, and we want this one to be a child of that one, and this one will be a child of that one. Now remember that we also need to change the axis. So this axis here needs to be rotated down, so the Z targeting axis is pointing down. So we'll do that one, and we also need to do this one here that just needs to be rotated 90 degrees up. All right, so the next thing that we wanna do is attach these cylinders to the appropriate object. So obviously, if this were a real turret, this bottom cylinder here would be attached to the housing. More than likely, it would probably be welded or bolted down. 
So we want to take this cylinder and make it a child of the housing. Now this cylinder up here is going to be moving with the barrel. And in real life, that type of attachment point would either be bolted or welded to that barrel. So we want to make this cylinder a child of the barrel object. So with the top one selected, we will shift select the bottom one and call up the command for the aim constraint. And we want to do the same with the bottom one, shift select the top one, add the aim constraint to that one. And there we go. So now if we take our controller object and we move it around, you can see that the piston is working correctly. Now if we go too high with it, you can see we've got a little bit of a gap. So we could fix that by taking this one and making the length of it a little bit longer. And we can take this one and make that one a little bit longer as well. But we also run into the problem that now when the barrel comes down low, now it is intersecting right there. So this is an issue that we can definitely talk about in another part on how to solve that because we're going to be using another constraint in order to do that. But for now, I mainly wanted to focus on the double targeting. All right, so I think I'm going to go ahead and conclude this part on the aim constraint and double targeting. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to comment below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.